most economics textbooks always begin with the topic of the fundamental economic problem. And at least in this regard, this short course in economics is going to be no different. However, instead of directly jumping to the very first economic model that most textbooks begin with, that is the production possibility frontier, also known as the production possibility curve, I personally prefer discussing and explaining a few key concepts before diving straight into the concepts of opportunity cost and so on. Okay, so the very first point that I need you to understand is that when we talk about scarcity, which is of course known as the fundamental economic problem, but if you think about it, this is a problem that you and I can both relate to on a personal level. So for instance, maybe you are currently studying in a university, but if you think about it, before you got into that university, there must have been a point in time you must have been studying extremely hard just so that you can get into this good university. However, as soon as you get into that university which you had always dreamed of, it's not like you're going to just sit back and relax and say to yourself that you no longer want anything more from life. Much to the contrary, the list of your wishes has just started. So as soon as you get into university, you realize that other than just studying hard, there's so much more that you have to do. So of course, other than maintaining a good GPA, you will also be worried about getting those internships. And as soon as you graduate, you'll be worried about getting a good job. And of course, soon after that, you probably want to get married and maybe have kids and so on. So the list of your dreams and wants and wishes is apparently just endless. Now, the point that you need to understand here is that the same applies for all individuals. All of us have a list of wishes and of course, we're all aware that the means to fulfill all of those wishes are obviously not enough. So this is precisely what we mean when we say that we all have unlimited wants, but in order to fulfill all of those unlimited wants, we simply do not have enough resources. So on the one hand, we have limited resources, but on the other hand, we have unlimited wants. So this is all that we mean when we say that the problem of scarcity is the fundamental economic problem. So in other words, our wants are infinite, whereas resources are obviously finite. And of course, finite simply means limited and limited is just another word for scarce. So something that is scarce is simply limited and not available in abundance. Okay, so I hope that we're all clear about the concept and meaning of scarcity. Next, we need to ask ourselves, what is the problem that we face because of the problem of scarcity? So let me put my question another way. So what I'm trying to ask is, what exactly is the issue that arises as a result of the problem of scarcity? Well, at this point, I would encourage you to pause the video and think for a moment if you know the answer or not. Well, the answer is quite simple. The problem of scarcity leads to another problem, which is that as a result of scarcity, we are always forced to make choices. So essentially what we're trying to say is because of scarcity, we just cannot have everything that we desire. And that means that because of scarcity, we are forced into making choices. Right. So, so far we have established the link between scarcity and choices. Now, the next question that I want you to think about is what happens when you make a choice? There is a specific economic term for this and no, that term is not opportunity cost. And once again, at this point, I would like to request you to pause the video and think for a moment if you can think of that term. Well, the answer is once again quite simple. So whenever we make choices, we always face 
trade-offs. And the term trade-off might sound fancy, but essentially it has a very simple meaning. So trade-off simply means that in order to get one thing, we must always give up something else. So you simply cannot become better off in one way without becoming worse off in some other aspect at the same time. Now at this point, I'm going to give an example which is going to link all of the three terms that I have discussed so far. Okay, so let's consider a very simple everyday example which all of us can relate to. We've all heard the saying that time is precious and of course we're all aware of the fact that we only have 24 hours in a day. So since time is scarce, there's only so much that we can get done within a single day. Okay, so in our example, we're starting out with the problem of the scarcity of time. Now, because of the fact that time is scarce, that is, it's limited. So as a result of the scarcity of time, we always are forced to make choices. That is, we are forced into choosing what we decide to do with our time. So for example, if you have just one free hour every day, then you will have to make a choice as to what you can spend that one hour on. So you can either spend that one hour using Facebook or watching TV or maybe playing some games. So the idea is once again that you will have to make a choice. Also, at this very moment in time, while you're listening to this lecture, you have already made a conscious and deliberate choice that you want to learn economics because you might as well have been sleeping instead. So in deciding to come to class, you make a choice as to what to do with your time. And as a direct result of making those choices, you're facing trade-offs because by choosing to do one thing, for example, coming to class, you have to give up on another thing, for example, going to sleep. So the concept of trade-offs simply means that in order to get one thing, you'll always be giving up something else. So making the choice of using Facebook in your free time would mean that you will have to give up on watching TV during that free time. And of course, you might think that, well, you could divide your time. That is, you could divide that one hour into half an hour of watching TV and half an hour of going out to play a game, perhaps football. But notice here that you have just one free hour. So the fact that you have limited free time means that you cannot spend one hour each on TV and football with your friends. So if you're going to do both, then obviously once again, you're facing a trade-off. That is, you have to give up that half an hour of watching TV in order to get that half an hour of playing football with your friends. And this is where the concept of opportunity cost comes in. So opportunity costs arise as a direct result of the fact that people face trade-offs. So once we have clearly acknowledged that in life, all of us face trade-offs all of the time. So as soon as we admit that the problem of scarcity means that we are forced into making choices and making choices involves facing trade-offs. That is, in other words, as a result of those choices that we make, we always, always face trade-offs. So the final link between trade-offs and the concept of opportunity cost should not be difficult to understand. So once again, I would encourage you to pause the video and think about whether or not you're clear about the links between the concepts of scarcity and choices and trade-offs. And if you're not, then I would encourage you to think about it before moving ahead. And essentially the idea is as follows. Because people face trade-offs, so making decisions requires comparing the costs and benefits of alternative courses of action. So this is where the concept of opportunity cost comes into the picture. Okay, so think of it like this. Simply recognizing that people face trade-offs does not in any way tell us what decisions they will or what decisions they should make. When we understand the concept of trade-offs, we're simply acknowledging the fact 
that yes, when we choose one thing, we have to give up on something else. So the concept of trade-off simply means that we are recognizing the fact that we have to give up something in order to get something else. We are not yet considering the costs. So let's say that you have to make a choice between A and B. So the idea of trade-off is simply that when you make that choice, you are aware of the fact that that you are facing a trade-off that is if you choose A then you will have to give up on B and if you choose B you will have to give up on A. However, we are not yet saying what the cost of either of these things is. So the concept of opportunity cost is going to help you decide which one of these you should actually choose. Because now you're actually going to be calculating or at least trying to calculate the cost of your actions and your choices. So the link between the concept of trade-off and opportunity cost is simply that because we face trade-offs, so making decisions always requires comparing the costs and benefits of alternative courses of action. And this comparison of the costs and benefits is what opportunity cost is all about. And of course, most textbooks define opportunity cost as the next best alternative foregone. So let's say that you have to make a choice between apples and bananas and you're well aware of the fact that you're facing trade-offs. That is, you recognize the fact that if you choose an apple, then you will not be able to choose a banana and vice versa. So here, the concept of trade-off simply means that you're aware of the fact that when you choose a banana, you will have to give up on an apple and vice versa. And now, aware of the fact that you're facing this trade-off when you actually make your choice, that is, you actually decide whether to choose the banana or the apple, then simply the one that you do not end up choosing is going to be your opportunity cost. So, so let's say that you decide to pick the apple. So your opportunity cost in this situation is simply that banana that you gave up. And of course, in real life, it's not just about choosing between apples and bananas. In fact, if you think about it, each and every action that you take always has a cost attached to it. And even if you do not consciously compare the costs and benefits of alternative courses of action, but every time that you have to make a choice, you're always facing trade-offs and, and even if you're not aware of those trade-offs that you're facing, but as soon as you decide which choice you want to go ahead with, then as a result of your decision, that is the choice that you make is always going to lead to an opportunity cost. So this brings me to the end of this video and hopefully we are clear about the fact that the terms scarcity, choices, trade-offs and opportunity costs are intricately interlinked and hopefully the links between each of these terms and concepts is clear to you.